Welcome to this video on how to knit a vintage nurse's apron to fit my painted Cricut animals. For this pattern you'll need yarn that's the same weight as the yarn you used for your animal. I'm using a 100% cotton yarn. Straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than those that you use to knit your animal. In most cases I find that I can use the size of needles that are recommended for the weight of yarn that I'm using. I use smaller needles for the animals so the stuffing doesn't show through, but the clothes need looser stitches so that they stretch better. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're on. This pattern uses stockinette stitch, garter stitch, a ridged eyelet stitch, basic increases and decreases, and eye cords for the apron straps. Overall, this is a quick and fairly simple project. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example of the finished project. We're going to start at the bottom at the hem and work up to the bodice and straps at the top. There are holes at the waistband that allow the straps to pull everything together where they tie at the back. So start by casting on 35 stitches. Knit across on row 1, knit across again on row 2, On row 3, knit the first 2 stitches and then purl to the last 2 stitches. Then knit those last 2 stitches. When you knit the first and last two stitches on the wrong sides, that gives the apron a nice edge that holds its shape and doesn't curl. Knit across on row four. Row five repeats row three, so knit the first two stitches then purl till you get to the last two stitches and then knit the final two stitches. Row six repeats row four, so just knit across again. And now we're ready to begin the ridged eyelet section. So knit across on row 7, knitting on the wrong side here forms a nice ridge on the other side. On row 8, knit the first two 
and then we're going to form the eyelets. So you do that by knitting two together and then doing a yarn over. And continue the pattern of knit two together followed by a yarn over. Do that all the way across until you only have three stitches left. and then knit those last three stitches. Row nine is a wrong side again, but we're gonna form the top edge of the ridge here by knitting this row again. From here, we're going to continue the stockinette pattern we started earlier by knitting on the right side and then purling on the wrong side rows with the knit two on each side of the wrong side rows. So knit across on row 10. On row 11, knit the first two then purl to the last two stitches and knit those. Now repeat rows 10 and 11 until you get to row 25. And that's where we'll start to decrease for the waistband. So meet me back here when you get to row 25. On row 25, knit the first eight stitches. Then the pattern is purl one and then purl two together. Do that decrease pattern six times. and then you should have nine stitches left. Purl the first one, and then knit the final eight. And when you're done with this row, you should have 29 stitches. And now we're gonna create a little bit of a waistband and some small holes where the straps can fasten the back of the apron together. So on row 26, Knit the first eight stitches. Then knit one, followed by a right decrease. A right decrease is also known as a knit two together. So do that four times, and then you should have nine stitches remaining. For those remaining stitches, knit the first six, and then do another right decrease, followed by a yarn over, and knit the last stitch. At the end of this row, you should have 25 stitches. On row 27, bind off the first eight stitches knitwise. When you're done binding off eight stitches, you should have one stitch on your right needle and 16 on the left. Then knit until you only have three stitches on the left needle. Then 
then with those three, do a right decrease with the first two, then yarn over, and then knit the last stitch. When you're done, you should have 17 stitches. On row 28, bind off the first eight stitches knitwise. When you're done, you should have one stitch on the right and eight on the left. Then knit all the final stitches. When you're done with this row, you should have nine stitches. At this point, we're ready to begin working the bodice. We want a little edge on each side of the bodice, so we're going to knit the first and last stitch of each wrong side row. So on row 29, knit one, purl seven, and then knit one. On row 30, just knit across. On row 31, knit one, purl seven, and knit one. On row 32, we're gonna start widening the top a little. So knit three, increase one, knit three, and increase one again, and then knit the last three stitches. And now you should have 11 stitches. On row 33, knit one, purl nine, and knit one. On row 34, knit three, increase one, Knit five, increase one, and knit three. We increased twice, so you should now have 13 stitches. On row 35, knit one, purl 11, and then knit one. Knit across on row 36. On row 37, knit one and purl three. Then you're gonna bind off the next five stitches purl wise. Then purl to the last stitch without binding off. And then knit the last stitch. At this point, you should have four stitches on the left and four stitches on the right. We're gonna work the left and right strap separately here. So we'll start with the left strap. On row 38, knit the first four stitches, then transfer the other four stitches on the other side to a stitch holder. And we'll come back to these later when we're ready to work the right side and strap. On row 39, purl three and then knit one. On 
On row 40, knit across. On row 41, purl 3 and then knit 1. On row 42, do a left decrease, which is also known as an SSK, and then do a right decrease, which is also known as a knit two together. From this point, we're going to form a long two stitch I cord for the long straps. And here's how to do that. Start by transferring the stitches to a double pointed needle or DPN. And we'll use two DPN needles from this point on. With the right side facing, slide the stitches so that you can begin knitting from the right side. This will seem wrong because the yarn is coming from the left at the back. But as you pull the yarn behind from the last stitch, it creates a little tube. So pull the yarn at the back from the left side and knit both stitches. Then don't turn the work, but instead slide the stitches to the other end of the DPN, always with the right side facing, and pull the yarn from the left side again to work the first and second stitch on the next row. Repeat these steps until you've knitted 50 rows of the I cord. That seems like a lot, but we're going to need long straps that can cross in the back and then fasten the apron sides. So I'll meet you back here when you've finished 50 rows of the I cord. When you've reached the end, bind off and then weave the tail up through the end of the I cord. And now we're ready to work the right strap. So knit across on row 38. On row 39, knit 1 and purl 3. Knit across on row 40, on row 41, knit 1 and purl 3. On row 42, do a left decrease, which is also known as an SSK, and then do a right decrease, which is also known as a knit two together. And on these last two stitches, we'll begin working the I cord for the right strap. So as a reminder, transfer the stitches to a DPN if you're not already using one. And then with the right side facing, slide the stitches to begin knitting from the right side. So pull the yarn at the back from the left side and knit both stitches. Don't turn the work, but slide the stitches to the right again, always with the right side facing, and pull the yarn from the left side once again to work the first and second stitch on the next row. Continue working the I cord until the second strap is as long as the first. So I'll meet you back here when you've finished 50 rows of the I cord. 
When you've reached the end, bind off and weave the tail up through the end of the cord. There's no sewing required on this apron, so at this point, you're almost done. Just weave in and trim any remaining ends. To assemble this apron, stretch the right strap across the back and pull it through the hole at the left side of the apron's waistband. Then pull the left strap across the back and through the hole on the right side. Then tie the straps into a bow in the back. And that's it! If you're making the vintage nurse outfit, be sure to check out the videos for the cap and dress as well. And if you don't already have a written pattern, you can get one through my Ravelry or Love Knitting stores. There are links to them in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel so you can know when I release new videos. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time!